She may not be mean, but she's plenty of green. Here's a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends series, She-Hulk. Jennifer Walters mutates into She-Hulk, a massive, muscled green hero with boundless strength and the will to do good. Let's get this review started for She-Hulk. Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before we get down to looking at the figure, what is the thing we always do first here on this channel? Blabbering on about stuff? Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. No, the first thing we're actually going to do is figure out how tall the figure actually stands by taking my futuristic digital tape measure and taking it right to the very top of her head. She seems like she's taller than your traditional Marvel Legends figure, but just how tall is she? Like I said, we're going to take it right to the very top of her head and then regurgitating it to you, the viewing audience. That's pleasant. You're looking at the figure of She-Hulk standing 7.3 inches in height. Switching that over to centimeters, the figure is a little over 18 and a half, 18.6 centimeters exactly. Reaching from the black hole, we're going to bring out one of the other Marvel Legends figures that we've looked at before. Yes, that's actually normally where I keep my Marvel Legends in the black hole. You can see her stacked next to Omega Sentinel, one of the previous figures we had a look at from the Tri-Sentinel wave. Yes, there is a considerable height difference. Perhaps it could be the case that, yes, Omega Sentinel is a slightly smaller figure, but still, I mean, when you compare the two, do you only then realize how much bigger She-Hulk is versus just your more traditional-looking Marvel Legends figures? Figure includes just a couple of accessories, just technically really three, a pair of fists and an alternate head sculpt, which is currently laying down on the job. Hey, you, wake up over there. The first thing we're going to have a look at, picking these up, she comes with a couple of grabbing or, as I call them, mauling hands. These hands would definitely be designed for mauling somebody. You can see that they have some nice detailing, down to the fact that they even took the time and sculpted in the fingernails. A nice appreciated touch. Now you can certainly take these hands. Where are these hands going to go? You know by now where hands go. I'm going to go ahead and pick the figure up. And you'll see located already on the sides, attached to the forearms, there are a bunch of close fists. Now, fists are fine for Hulk or She-Hulk smashing action. But say, let's just say you'd like to pop these ones off. Let's go ahead and just wiggle them off, remove the pegs, and free them from their socketed prison. Find the appropriate hands, thumbsies go in, and we're going to pop those in place. While we're at it, we can also do the exact same thing on the other side. Rinse and repeat, basically. We're just going to pop that hand off and replace it with these hands right here. At least these hands give something, brings something to the table. It could look like that she's asking for money back that her friend had borrowed off of her. I would probably be quick to return that money. Or again, perfect for mauling hands, for mauling somebody's with those hands. The other accessory she comes included with, we'll have to wait for a second as we first have a look at the defaulted head sculpt that comes included with the figure. Would I be bold to say it's a pretty looking head sculpt? It's not what I would traditionally think of for She-Hulk. It essentially looks like just a model's face painted in green. Of course, She-Hulk has changed a bit in the comics over the years, but I do think that that's quite a pretty looking head sculpt. Certainly one of the prettiest head sculpts I've seen. I wouldn't say it was wasted necessarily on this figure, but this head sculpt could have easily been used on another character as well, perhaps even like a White Queen. As you can see, the paintwork is pretty good on the face, all things considered. You can see, for example, like the eyes are nicely painted in green, with the pupils, of course, painted in the inside. There is a little bit of paint problems, but so small, I almost just didn't feel the need to point them out, but I will anyways. A little bit of white has found its way just touching the tops of those irises. But like I said, pretty looking eyes, though. Very large looking caterpillar eyebrows. And her lips, while it may seem to be black, they appear to be more closer to almost a very dark gray. Like I said, it's a really nice looking head sculpt. And it's one of two different, of course, to come include with the figure. The other one was laying down on the job. Let's go ahead and pick that one up right now. And you have this one right here. I don't know, for some reason, I would consider this more to be a She-Hulk head sculpt. You can really only see the one eye. The other eye has been covered completely. By this little snake of hair that's slithered down her face. I do like that a little bit because it adds some depth to the figure. 
that you have to look to the side. And just by the fact that it's got that little bit of hair draping down the front of her face, it casts a nice shadow over top of the face as well. Now to remove the head sculpt, all you do is just grab the torso, pop it off the ball joint. While you're doing it, you'll probably hear a sound. And then we'll go ahead and just replace the head pop this in place again you know for the fact that they use these large ball pegs normally i would be complaining about the fact that they are so large in size but you know when it comes to marvel legends they're not too difficult though it took me a little bit more time to pop that back into place they're not that hard to really remove nor are they generally that hard to actually put the new head sculpts in place but this is the other head sculpt we can go ahead and bring back now the severed head it's more personal preference than anything else I mean, some would say this is a fine head sculpt. But again, I would not really consider that so much She-Hulk as I would consider this to be the better head sculpt. Her eyes in this case aren't the green anymore. Oh, no, no, no. Now they're a very bright yellow. I like those eyes quite a bit. And also you can see now visible teeth. The lips seem to be the same color, almost, almost as if the lips are a slightly a lighter color. Let's just look to compare the two. Yeah, the lips are almost just a little bit lighter of a blue. But boy, is that a great looking head sculpt. Now again, I like this one because it does have the draping hair in the front. So it brings a little bit something different to the table. Of course, then you've got the flowing hair off to the side. Sorry, what? You want to see the side? Okay. See the side of the hair. And we'll see it on the back there as well. A nice real use of adding some additional dark green to that as well. Giving her that traditional She-Hulk hairstyle. That's just the head sculpt, of course. There's a lot more to examine here on the figure. I guess we could technically start from the back and work our way around to the front. She does have the torn, tattered T-shirt. It's a lot of T's. Very large holes of various sizes. This one's the biggest of the lot. This would be both kind of... I guess this would be Australia. You know, down at the bottom corner there. It's a weird weird comparison to be using. But again, you've got all these sculpted in holes there as well that actually aren't torn all the way through. This is a softer plastic, by the way, that's just overlaid her body. And again, we spin it around to the front. Various tattered holes are all over the figure's body, or at least this part of the figure's body. It doesn't seem like the t-shirt has a lot of coloring to it. I guess it depends really on what light is hitting it, because in person, it actually seems like there's a slight darker shadowing, just a little bit of a darker color that's added to it. Though, while I'm looking at it through the camera, it seems like it's almost the same coloring. It's kind of, I think it's more the studio light than anything else. She's certainly shredded. She has very large arms. Very, like I said, washboard stomach. Well, only we could have stomachs looking like that, perhaps a little less green. You can see there's her belly button there as well. And then we make our way down to her pants. It's funny enough, like, th these pants are so torn like this... And yet some high-end stores sell jeans like this for tend to be like $150, $200. I don't even get that. You could just buy like cheap jeans and do this yourself. Who's buying tattered jeans like this for such a crazy amount of money? I guess that's the thing right now. But it, it Definitely, you can see there's a lot of tears going through it. I do like the fact that they're sculpted in there. They didn't just phone it in and simply just paint in the, the holes. They actually did sculpt them. Whether the paint was successful to fill in those areas is questionable. There are a few little areas where the green hasn't made its way all the way down, and other cases where the green has overlapped onto the pants. But for the most part, it's a pretty successful looking sculpt. Now, the term no shoes, no service usually applies to restaurants and, I guess, companies that want to make sure their patrons and customers coming in aren't wearing, uh, are wearing footwear. I guess in, in this case, poor She Hulk wouldn't be able to go into a restaurant. Because, again, she has no shoes. Um, the feet seem a little on the small side. I mean, when you look at the proportions of the rest of the figure, it sort of seems like the feet seem to be the smallest thing on the figure. I probably would have made these just a little bit bigger, but, I mean, nobody wants to have big, giant feet on the bottom of their She-Hulk. They just seem like there's a little... Well, they're a little on the small side. Let's just say that. And of course, we can tilt the figure upside down. You can see that there are peg holes provided... On the undersides of the feet, in the territory of the heels, right around the back area here. So if you do want to make use of a display stand, even though technically these Marvel Legends figures don't come included with stands, then by all means, you can use that. And you can put her in a more crazier looking pose, I suppose, than just having her standing straight like this. Well, standing straight like this. 
let's run through the posability on She-Hulk. Her head rotates back and forth. You already saw how it attaches onto that ball peg, but the ball peg is also on a hinge. So it allows then the head to move down, which is a little strange when you see the sculpting of her hair like this. And it also moves up. I really like that side profile. Look at that. Wow. The head rotates technically all the way around, but there's mileage, of course. Mileage may vary depending on this particular head sculpt or the other head sculpt that we had looked at before. Uh, it gets a little hung up, of course, when you start hitting the shoulder territory. But overall, like just that's a great head sculpt. As for the arms, however, though, you, the arms can go beyond the point of a 90 degree angle bend. Or that looks like she's going to just smash some guy's head like a grape. <laughs> the arms rotate all, also all the way around. You can swivel at the bicep. Watch as it swivels. There it goes. And for her elbows, it's an interesting thing that they've developed here. It's slightly awkward when you look at it from the side. But it almost serves as a double hinge joint. Because when it... When you hinge it the first time, it hits a ledge and you almost feel like a resistance, like a little click happening there. But then you can hinge it a second time and it hits that second point. It almost serves as a double hinge joint without technically having to incorporate a third piece, that little elbow piece that divides the forearm from the bicep. I like that. I kind of like the way that they've done it. And also the way that they've done it also, yes, there is going to be a point where when you are bending the arm midpoint, there's going to be that little parts sticking up but i that doesn't bother me too much i just appreciate the fact that she has sort of a serviceable double hinge joint there and then of course whatever hands you decide to use with the figure hands rotate all the way around and you can also hinge them back and forth let's get that arm going down there upper torso is on a ball joint despite the fact that she does have the tattered shirt that hangs a little bit lower down into these shredded abs you could grate cheese on that she can still rotate her upper torso very comfortably and very easy up and down and you also can rock it back and forth as well uh, she doesn't have any lower waist articulation a lot of it unfortunately gets then forfeited because the lower part of her torso is it's basically just the sculpted pants at least the beginning of them but the legs hinge out that's only about to the full extent of what you can actually pull off you can't get a full splits no van dam going on with she hulk but you can get about that with her legs the legs go forward the legs go back till of course it hits the back behind that's to the f furthest point where you can go with it she does have a swivel three quarters of the way up the thigh she has in this case a double hinge knee where there is that third piece right in the middle i don't think they could pull off the same thing they're doing with the elbow with down below on the knee it just would look out of place you have to have the kneecap there after all uh, she doesn't have any articulation from here to here but when it comes to her feet what you would expect hinge back and forth on the foot itself and then you can also rock it back and forth this way as well. But that's She-Hulk. Hey, nice looking figure. Probably when it comes to posing her on display. I'm going to get some, I don't know. This is just quickly throwing in together some, some sort of pose. But I'm probably going to have her going like this. Just with her arms out. Like she's <laughs> going to squish somebody like a grape. Uh, even though she technically does come include with two different head sculpts. Again, that was the other one in case you had a short memory and forgot what the other one looked like. I mean, this one is okay, but it looks also like it could just be some generic, really attractive female character. I just threw out their White Queen, but it, you could fill in the blank with any other character. Uh, this one is okay, but if certainly when it comes to push to shove, and I hope certainly that she's not doing any of the bit of the pushing, when it comes to displaying She-Hulk for myself, I'm definitely going to go with this head sculpt, part of my finger. I'm going to definitely go with this head sculpt instead because it looks a lot more She-Hulkish to me, if that is even a word. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's a nice looking She-Hulk. We don't get a lot of She-Hulks, really, when you consider it. The big green guy usually takes all the center spotlight. I can understand. Everybody gets on board a new Hulk release. Where's the love for She-Hulk? Less is certainly more when it comes to this figure release because what figures we do get of She-Hulk ends up being pretty nice looking releases, including, of course, this one very high on the top of that list. I really do like how this one turned out. You know, speaking of less is more, looking at the artwork on the back of the packaging, I understand it's pulled from the comics. That's a little too more for me. I like to pull that back just a little bit. Even though she is the green behemoth, I'd still like to think that She-Hulk has a more feminine looking body. That's just my own personal preference. I think having her with oversized tree trunk arms like what you're seeing on the back of the on the back of the box is a little too much. That's just 
just my own personal preference. Now, speaking of course, perfect personal preferences, she does come included with two swappable head sculpts. This is my favorite of the two because I just think that having her with the grimacing looking face, the visible teeth just fits better to the profile of She-Hulk. But again, the fact that you get two head sculpts is a nice touch. And then for yourself, you can decide when you pick the figure up for yourself, which one you want to have displayed on the shelf. I'm going to go this route and probably put the other one back in her plastic prison at least for the time being. What do you guys think of She-Hulk? Let me know down below in the comments section. And which head sculpt would you actually choose if you picked this figure up for yourself or if you have picked up the figure for yourself, which one do you display the figure with? If you're also new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Don't let the rage kick in. Because I don't know, you may have big giant tree trunk arms as the result of it. But make sure you're also turning on the bell notification so that you're always getting those friendly reminders of when new videos are going to be popping up. We are also going to be looking at some more Marvel Legends reviews. So make sure you keep your green peepers peeled because there's definitely going to be a lot more content coming your way. And thanks for watching. See you guys next time.